In the last section, we look at authoring emails with React. This is section 9, where we'll look at React Native. In this first video of section 9, we'll get set up with React Native and make our first few changes. React Native is a separate project from React. It allows developers to write with JavaScript and React for iOS applications. It does not, however, render the JavaScript in a web view like other JavaScript-focused mobile frameworks. Instead, the JavaScript is used with native iOS views to deliver a responsive native user experience. To get React Native on our system, there are a few requirements. I've already installed all of those on my system. The instructions are fairly easy to follow. Xcode is needed for any iOS development. Homebrew, which we've talked about before, is for installing packages on OS X. In this case, Watchman and Flow. Watchman will look at our files and automatically transpile them when they change. This allows for rapid development cycles. After the requirements have been installed, we can install the npm module. With that installed, we can create our iOS project. The React Native CLI will create all the Xcode files required to run our application, along with nifty defaults like a gitignore file. We're creating this in a new folder inside our repository. Remember, this is an entirely different application than our web app and should be treated as such. In a more real world use case, it likely live in its own repository. We'll treat this new folder as a separate repository. Once the setup is done, we can open a project file in Xcode. Hit the Run button and see a terminal window as well as the iPhone simulator pop up. The terminal window runs Watchman, and the simulator shows the app. We can hit Command R to reload the application, just like in a browser. No need to stop and recompile everything all the time. Let's open the application in Vim and start editing. The index.ios.js file is our application entry point. React Native does not use divs and spans, but instead view, text, and others, which translate to native iOS views. Let's remove the text that we don't want. Styles are handled in a different way than on the web as well. We don't have CSS files. However, the styles are very similar to CSS. Layout is done using the Flexbox layout model. Let's remove the styles we don't need and bump up the font. Update the label to say Storekeeper, and simply hit Command R in the simulator to see the change. We also get a bunch of other goodies. We can hit Command Control Z or Set to see the developer menu and even open up the developer tools in Chrome. Doing so, we can see a log of the application and see it update as we reload. In this video, we got set up with React Native. In the next video, we'll add a list of orders to our iOS application.